The year 2000 represented a difficult time for the band Rage Against the Machine. On the verge of breaking up, the band would make one of their final appearances together at the MTV Video Music Awards. They were nominated for Best Rock Video, but things didn't exactly go as planned, and what happened that night only further alienated the members of the group. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. On September 7, 2000, Rage Against the Machine would attend the MTV Video Music Awards as they were nominated for their video for Sleep Now in the Fire, which was directed by filmmaker Michael Moore. The song was found on the group's 1999 album, The Battle of Los Angeles. The band's video intercut footage of them playing in front of Wall Street in New York City, interspersed with a parody of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. The video shoot for Sleep Now in the Fire would end up shutting down Wall Street. Going up against Rage Against the Machine was Limp Bizkit, who was nominated for their video for Break Stuff. The video showed fans and some other musicians mouthing the words to the song. At the time, Limp Bizkit were labeled as the face of new metal, and they were also the pariahs of the music industry despite their massive following. Rage Against the Machine bassist Tim Comerford, who looked back at that night, would tell the Dan Lebetard show the following. We were up against Limp Bizkit, one of the dumbest bands in the history of music. We're up against them and their singer made the video. So it was Limp Bizkit vs. Rage. Fred Durst directed the video vs. Michael Moore. And I'm sitting there with Michael and I'm like, hey man, if that camera doesn't come over here, I'm climbing up that structure and I'm going to sit there like an effing gargoyle and throw a wrench in the show. And he's like, Tim, follow your heart. Meanwhile, frontman Zach De La Rocha and guitarist Tom Morello urged the bassist to stay put and not disrupt the awards ceremony. Probably not helping things was according to drummer Brad Wilk, the people at MTV gave the band members bottles of champagne, and by the members of Rage's own admission, they were expecting to win the award that night. Limp Bizkit would end up winning the award for Best Rock Video, and here's what happened next. Rage Against the Machine bassist Tim Comerford was arrested after he disrupted the show by climbing part of the and, set. Uh, madman. This guy is rock and roll. He should be getting the award. I thought Eminem was chanting my name, but I was wrong. He was chanting to jump. He's gonna kick his ass! Tops, they were embarrassed and humiliated and frustrated um, because they could not get the cat out of the tree. Charles Manson's little brother out there! To be honest, MTV would jump to the next award with the night's host, the Waynes Brothers, making jokes about what happened. Rolling Stone magazine would report the next day that the bassist was arrested and charged with assault and resisting arrest, while his bodyguard, who jumped to his defense, was charged with obstructing justice. Drummer Brad Wilk would recall the event during an interview on the Dean Del Rey podcast, saying, There's an undercover cop who went on a ladder to try to get Timmy. The guy tries to grab at him. He's an undercover cop, so he's got regular clothes. Tim literally grabs the guy's white effing mustache and kind of pulls on it. I'm dying. I'm like, this is effing incredible. They finally got him down and we were all thrown outside. MTV hated us. I remember the head guy at MTV was there. As we were being ushered out, he said, thank you very much, don't come back, that type of thing. I just remember laughing my ass off in the van back to the hotel. Despite the fact that Limp Bizkit were inspired by Rage Against the Machine and even covered the group's song Killing in the Name, that love wasn't reciprocated. With Wilk telling Dean Delray, to be honest, we weren't fans of Limp Bizkit. The only thing we were fans of is that they were actually getting it together to write and play music and do things. Comerford, meanwhile, would tell Rolling Stone years later, I do apologize for Limp Bizkit. I really do. I really feel bad that we inspired such bullshit. But the story doesn't end there. According to Comerford, he would claim that people still come up to him and bring up the incident, telling Rolling Stone, It's aged like wine. I get more people that come up to me now. Back in the 2000s, it was like, dude, I saw you do that. What was that all about? Now it's like, dude, I saw you do that. That was so effing awesome. I love that. It feels more comfortable to talk about. But the basis would reveal he did have one regret that night, telling the magazine, I wish I would have swung on that thing and brought it to the ground and just destroyed it. If I could do it all over again, I would have ripped that thing to the ground and shredded it, he claimed. A month after the MTV award show, frontman Zach De La Rocha announced he was leaving the band. The band would, however, reunite in 2007 and perform together until 2011, and announced as recently as 2019 they would be playing some shows in 2020, but we all know what happened in 2020. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.